morning. Welcome back to Debrek on this seventh day of December 2021. My name is Sam Gituko, and I want to introduce the panel that is here in the studio. We have Canon Chris Kenyanjui uh, from the NCCK. He's the General Secretary. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I keep wondering why General Secretary and not Secretary General. Well, general is better. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then we have uh, Mushmua Richard Onyonka from Kitutu Church South. Welcome back to the show. Thank you, Sami. Uh, Good morning. I've been very busy up, up country. Yes, yeah. and you've been seeing what you've been doing. We'll be talking about that later on. Yes. But Senator Moses Kajueng makes a comeback after so long. Good morning, Senator. Good morning, Sam. What has been going on? Uh, well, I took a fairly low profile, I think about uh, four months <laughs> sabbatical, but mm -hmm. uh, a lot of that I've also been on the ground talking to my people. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm back on air now. Listening to the ground. What are they saying? Uh, the ground is positive. They are yearning for a presidency and ad administration uh -huh. that will unite the country, revive the economy, bring about national cohesion. Uh -huh. And in the course of the show, I'll tell you who they think will do that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> of course, a lot of uh, political leaders have been listening to the ground and coming up with the different conclusions. <clears throat> so it will be interesting to hear from you on that. But I want us to begin by looking at what's <coughs> making in, uh, um, headlines on the two dailies. On the front page of the Daily Nation, you'll see that 2022 Uhuru follows the Moi script. Unlike his predecessor, Moi Kibaki, President Kenyatta is keen to influence choice of who will take over from him when his second term in office ends in August 2022 in what is seen as a bid to shape legacy. There is also the story of the disaster of those that um, we lost in that Mwingi bus tragedy that's still on the Daily Nation. And then uh, C.S. Matiangi and C.S. Magoha were somewhere uh, in Kisi, where they're saying that exams with human face uh, that uh, the KCSC and KCPE 2021, which will be held in the months of March and April next year, will uh, be considerate of what the learners have gone through during this COVID-19 phase. On the front page of the standard, you'll see they paid for state neglect with their lives. Of course, again, uh, the question of uh, Mwingi bus tragedy. The infrastructure, infrastructure PS Paul Maringa assessed the bridge on the 14th of December 2019 and urged locals to come down and promised an emergency intervention, saying its renovation was a priority, but national and county governments slept on the job. We'll be speaking to the governor of Kitui later on on the show about this alongside the panelists that are here in studio. But I want us to begin by looking at uh, what C.S. Mago had just uh, said yesterday with C.S. Matiangi. Once we have that clip, we'll be playing it for you. And it's about uh, the return of the Ken in schools. They are saying that uh, because of um, a withdrawal of that, there's a lot of indiscipline and the reason why we're having so much of unrest in schools is exactly that. Let's listen to what the leaders said yesterday. We need to introduce caning back in schools. Like yesterday, do not expect our teachers to do the impossible. And that conversation involved as to whether we still need boarding schools or not. Going further on this direction, is going to include the provision of approved schools, the walking back in the legal framework is on the basis of the so-called human rights. I am not a subscriber to those things going, oh, now human rights of the child. I don't subscribe to those things. So I'll be here in Asema, spare the rod and spoil the child. We mean attacker to answer Sungumuza how we will discipline our children. What to urge and chase all right, and it's a conversation that has been going on for so long. Let me begin with you, Honorable Onyonka, because you're a lawmaker at the National Assembly. Do they make a case for the return of the cane? What has failed in the society? I think, uh, Sam, it's a combination of various issues. Um, number one, of course, we are being blamed as parents that we've not been able to engage ourselves uh, with our children meticulously and make sure that we discipline them um, and explain to them why certain decisions have to be made for them to toe the line and behave well. Uh, but at the same time, I believe in deterrence. If you don't have deterrence, then there's a likelihood that the child who you are expecting to behave well may decide to go uh, where we are now. The children now, uh, when we were in fact passing the law in parliament, I was there and uh, we were discussing it amongst ourselves. And one of the issues that many of us were looking at at that time 
um, is what the activists were presenting for us to change uh, the, the Children's Act and all the other subsequent laws which were to be changed. Mm -hmm. But there are certain laws which in Africa we pass, and uh, these laws, uh, to me, um, uh, are not domesticated uh, given who we are as a people mm -hmm. and what we, what we need to do. Of course, everybody is going to say uh, children are children, whether you are an African or whether you are a European or whatever. But the small, small example I'll give you, Sam, is this. Mm -hmm. uh, the other day I saw the Chinese government um, actually passing a law which is saying that at, at certain times, either in schools or at home, um, children should not be left to have their, their pads. Uh, because you know, they have found out that children are stuck on, on social media platforms, on whatever they are watching, mm -hmm. and they're spending <coughs> close to 18 hours a day on those platforms. And the Chinese government has realized, no, that we have to come up with a way on how we allow our children um, to have interpersonal relationship with their parents, with their right. friends, with their school, school friends, with their teachers, and we have to remove. And, and if you go to every home now, Every child, uh, go to a home and see children sitting on a platform, I mean, on a, in a place, whether it's in a home or whether it's in a social event. Mm -hmm. Each one of them is, <clears throat> is having a tab. Right. And each one of them is busy on those games. I'm using that, explain, uh, in that example to explain that there are certain things, yes, which we adopt from, from Western standards. And yet, in reality, we need to start engaging and looking at how do we handle our children. Uh, I, I was mentioning to Senator, my brother here, and I said, somebody like me, honestly, Sam, I would never be here today if my father had not, first of all, made sure that I knew the cane was there, mm -hmm. and if the school that I went to, which is my old school, is Kizzy High School, when I was in Form 1, 2, 3, I was the most troublesome child in the world. <laughs> so the principal actually had assigned the school bus to make sure that on a daily basis, mm -hmm. <laughs> I knew that my bamboos were there. So mm -hmm. I started started moving away from the danger <laughs> of, How being often was it of being caned every day. And look at what turned out of me. <laughs> <laughs> Have you used it on your children? <laughs> um, once or twice, yes. Once or twice, yes. <laughs> um, my, children, my, my, my eldest son, when he came, when I, I got them out of Nairobi and took them to Kabarak uh, Primary School. And when I took them there, the boy just became rebellious. So the school actually told me, take your son home and figure out what to do with him next term. Mm -hmm. If he comes with the attitude he has, then we are going to release him. Mm -hmm. So I had to use the cane. I had to talk to him. I had to engage him. And when he went back, uh, actually, the class teacher called me and said, what was the magic? Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, I tuned him a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Which year was this? <laughs> yes. Which year was this? Uh, last year. That was illegal. Um, but nobody saw it. <laughs> <laughs> Senator Kajang, I mean, do you agree that it's time to return the cane, uh, the, the, the cane in schools and um, would you use it, have you used it? Well, first of all, um, oh, Senator, oh, Honorable Onyonka, uh, at least now I understand where the rain started beating him. It started at Kisi High. I've, yes. I've been wondering about his stubbornness. But it's not about stubbornness, it's firmness. I mean, he takes positions that sometimes are unpopular, but he sticks to them. Mm -hmm. I have a problem in institutionalized violence. Mm -hmm. Institutionalized violence, be it against children, be it against women, be it against any aspect of the population. The caning that happens in, in schools um, had been described as institutionalized violence and an abuse of the rights of children. Now, if we are going to change our policy position, there has to be greater depth of thought. C.S. Magoa, C.S. Matiangi should tell us that this was the policy, th these were the drivers of that policy shift. This is our assessment uh, 15 years later, because it's almost been 15 years. And this is why we think mm -hmm. we need to, to shift things. Not just doing it in a rally the way we politicians do it. So I think they owe this nation mm -hmm. a proper policy analysis before we shift things. What are my personal thoughts? If we are going to institutionalize violence against children, then very soon someone will wake up in a public rally and say that it is okay for husbands to beat their wives. That is institutionalized violence. We have moved from generations mm -hmm. where the chief in the <coughs> village could, could arrest you and cane you. 
we have moved from an era where an administration police or, or police uh, officer mm -hmm. would cane you. We have moved from a generation where we had a police force to a police service. So institution, institutionalizing violence as a means of correcting or even a, a means of deterring uh, misbehavior amongst our children, in my view, it is a wrong thing. Mm -hmm. The pressures that our children are going through right now, if you look at the 100% transition policy, because most of these fires are happening in, in boarding secondary schools, our schools are cramped, they are full, I visited schools where a classroom has about 100 uh, pupils against a recommended uh, number of 45 or, or, or 42. We must look at the conditions that prevail in these schools to an extent where even some of those schools that we used to call high-cost national schools, the Kisi Highs, the Lenana schools, the Nairobi schools, have become sort, sort of ghettos. Mm -hmm. To an extent where schools that even had uh, rooms. I, when I was in high school, we used to have uh, uh, cubicles. cubicles. These cubicles have been converted into dormitories. Our school system is like a detention camp. It's a concentration kind of system. In fact, our school system is as bad as a Boston institution. We must address the issues of infrastructure. We must address the issues of quality of services, things like food. Teenagers y will, y will, Senator, will run a mock on small things like those. Yet, Senator, despite the congestion, it's just a few of the apples that are doing these things that are inciting these pupils. How do you deal with them? Uh, well, there are still other instruments. There are suspensions and expulsions. We've got Boston institutions. Unfortunately, this country has only two Boston institutions that deal with uh, uh, juvenile uh, de delinquents. And, and I've had an opportunity to visit them when you're looking at reforms in, in our prisons uh, services. So we, we need to think much more than mm -hmm. caning. Mm -hmm. The issue of failed parenthood, are parents playing their role? positively as role models. The issue of even the other role models, the political class, if every day you're watching news and, 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 and some you read the news, it's either one politician, you, you, you always have one politician insulting the other and you give the other one a right of reply and the right of reply will be a corresponding insult. <laughs> our children are learning from these things. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, the kin should be the least of our worries. What we need to do as a country is to revisit the values, right. but also beyond the values, more practical things, we must have a thorough reform of our education sector, particularly the public education sector. And that's why you are not hearing fires at Brookhouse. You are not hearing fires at uh, Riara or Makini or those other schools, because the infrastructure, the quality, the attention, and even the small things like food that they are given are things that uh, uh, resonate well with the children at that age. And I'll come back with one more question because you've not responded to one of them. But uh, Canon, you come from the religious background and people have said that um, the society has failed. Um, we don't do the things as we used to uh, in the early years. How has been your experience monitoring these, of course, um, spiritually directing the young ones, and what would you say is the main cause of the challenges that you are facing to the extent that now two cabinet secretaries, um, PhDs, uh, PhD holders, are uh, talking about reintroduction of the kidney? Thank, thank you very much, Sam. I, I think um, while I respect the views and the opinions of the two cabinet secretaries, I disagree with them. First is because, um, as Mwajimua has said, there is a reason why we removed kidney from schools. I was personally killed many times in school. Sometimes we'll be killed the entire class, put on the floor, killed, and sometimes we'll not even know the good reason why we are being killed. Mm -hmm. It was violence against children, and it traumatized some of us. I knew some of my friends who actually uh, went out of school because they were bigger than us. You can imagine a teenage boy with beards being beaten by a, a, a young teacher in primary school. It was very degrading. So we shouldn't go back to Kenny. Mm -hmm. The reason why we justified um, the removal of Kenny have not changed. The second issue is that children that are modern right now um, need modern ways of parenting. And that is why we are working with the Ministry of, uh, in charge of Children's Services to actually come up with parental guidelines. Mm -hmm. Because we have felt that even the modern uh, parent requires modern skills of parenting. And as churches, we are working together to go back to the Bible, go back to our writings and our theological institutions to ask ourselves, how do we guide these young people? The third issue is technology. Our young people are exposed to a lot of violence in the media, in the social media, mm -hmm. in TikTok and other places. They are playing squid game. 
you know, and other Minecraft and others, where actually they, they take guns. They are not they are virtual guns and they shoot people. They shoot others. There's a lot of killing, you know? And uh, they are even taught even how to commit suicide, how to kill other people, and so on. Mm -hmm. All these are all accessible because we have improved our internet connectivity in the country. Nobody is taking account of what is being wired in the young people. Even when they ban a school, some of the young people don't believe that the school is going to ban. They think it's just like the way you shoot fire. You know those fire guns? Mm -hmm. You shoot at something, it, it burns, and then tomorrow you are going to find it there. So we need modern ways of um, uh, disciplining our children. We need to bring back uh, a report, for example, and, and I think this is very important. When there was burning of schools, although there were just a few, we asked the students to go back home uh, for two or three days. They went back, and Miranda was on fire, Jabindi boys was on fire. So it was not that they needed the three days so that then they stopped burning the schools. So I think we need to stop the knee-jerk reaction. Mm -hmm. Let us sit down, let us engage our researchers so that they research and find out what exactly is causing the young people to burn the schools. My final thought is about depression among children. We are doing some project with World Vision and the Ministry of Interior where we are trying to see how we can protect uh, children from violence. Because we, are, we live in a very violent, violent homes, violent communities, violent political arena, and young people are imbibing and absorbing this into their own psyche. Unless we change the ways the grown-ups are behaving, the young people, where are they learning the violence from? It is from their parents. It is from the leaders. It is from the other people. In 2007, we saw Kenya burning. Those who are five years in 2007, how old are they now? They are the ones who are actually... 19. Yeah, so, so they are the ones who are actually... There's trauma, a lot of trauma in our children. There are homes that are fairly violent, and that violence is being taken to school. So we need to look at that psyche and, you know, counseling and guidance so that then the children mm -hmm. become like us. Because children are actually a reflection of who their parents are. Their parents so if are. the children, if, if the parents don't like their children, then they should blame themselves. Mm -hmm. And Senator, I presume that you're a parent of young children. Yes. How do you do it? Because, like he says, these are real challenges. The technology has sort of interfered with the social connections that um, the parents and their children have today. Um, so how are you disciplining your children that you've seen working? I think it, um, it takes a lot of uh, close contact uh, for, to be a modern parent. Because children are getting information from all over. Uh, and, and I think uh, he's mentioned some games that are of extreme concern. Children are capable of going to YouTube. They are capable of downloading games. They are capable of accessing all these things on technology. So modern parenthood requires a lot of close contact. Uh, it is unlike in the past, mm -hmm. where our parents would send you to go and look after cows the whole day, and you come back in the evening, and uh, you know they, they don't care what you've been up to out there. So for me, close contact, close parenthood, uh, to be more uh, present in the lives of your children. But yes, some. Um, there could be circumstances that would force a parent to reprimand a child, and that reprimand could involve a pinch or a slap on the wrist or something like that. I believe that a parent is in a better position to decide the disciplinary options for a child as opposed to a teacher. We should not transfer the responsibility of parenthood from our homes to the schools. If we cannot discipline our children at home, mm -hmm. we should not then outsource it to the teachers in schools. Let the teachers in schools do what they are supposed to do, what they are trained to do in the curriculum at the universities or at the TTCs. I don't think there is a, a part of the curriculum about caning and meeting out uh, violence on children. It is a responsibility of parents. What has worked for me is that closeness, is that presence, but what has also worked for me is that depending on the, the scale or the nature of um, uh, uh, misbehavior, I 
I could pinch a child. I could slap the child on a wrist. I could use a muiko or a slipper. That has been the traditional way of bringing up children in this country. But I wouldn't want the teacher to be the one to look for a muiko. Let the parent be the one to do it. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, uh, Honorable Nyonka, as you respond to that, there's been this feeling, you know, indifference that mm. you want to punish your child because we're having actually a conversation just before the show started here and you hear of very young parents who went through should i call it hell when they were being brought up now they still have that trauma they don't want to uh, inflict the same on their parents so how do you strike that balance knowing that as a parent you have the responsibility to take care of the future generation or the next generation while also dealing with your own trauma that you went uh, in in the hands of your parents Okay, uh, I think you're now going to the deep abyss of evaluating and analyzing what really makes, uh, what affects and what makes a child uh, behave in a certain manner. Uh, b before I continue with that, the point I wanted to make, I was in that conference. Actually, if you listen carefully to what Magoa said, uh, only that the articulation was not very clear. He said, we must begin to have a conversation about this issue. They didn't actually say, let us disband and, and, and remove all the legal um, uh, parameters that have been set into place, the laws and, and the, all the other subsequent laws about uh, 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 bringing up our children. Mm -hmm. And the discussion that was uh, raised yesterday, which surprised us because we were sitting there in that function, is that we need, first of all, to start engaging our teachers let us find out why we have the scenario happening. And yet, in reality, if you look some, the burning of schools is being repeated on a two-yearly basis. Mm -hmm. Is that a coincidence or is that a deliberate move? There have been cases where some of the principals have been, have been accused of having been complacent or they didn't uh, play any role which they were supposed to play. You have an issue where um, yes. the church is now being required and requested uh, to come up with proposals on what we need to do. So in my, feel, in, in my observation on what has happened, I just think that it is good for us to continue having this observation. It is good, I mean, this discussion about how we are going to bring our children. We have to now look at all the uh, parameters that we are following up as adults mm -hmm. on what happens with our children. It is true. Uh, if you raise uh, the question on whether the child should be spanked when they are in school or whether they should be spanked when they are at home, um, that also needs to be looked at. Like, I mean, I'll give you an example. Uh, if you look at many stories on what is happening in the U.S., how drugs have penetrated and percolated communities. Mm -hmm. And I was watching a clip once, and one of the parents was saying, there's really nothing I can do because I cannot keep my child in the house. The child is allowed to go out and play with the other kids, and that is when the drug dealers get drugs and they bring them over, and they start giving your children drugs without you even being aware. By the time you begin to realize that your child is having a problem, then the question becomes, do you take that child for psychiatric treatment? Do you take them for psychological treatment? Do you handle it legally? And for me, this is what I read from what Matiangi and what Magoa said. They are okay. saying, let us begin to have a conversation. Let us actually be honest and sincere about what do we do. And I think like Senator Kajuanga said, there was a reason why these laws were passed, because it looks like, it is not it looks like, it is that caning and corporal punishment, punishment was abused for a very long time and it was causing the trauma that you're talking about. Right. So my feeling and honest observation is that let us have the conversation, let parliament have the relevant committees begin to discuss this, let's consult all the stakeholders and let us mitigate and look for a way on how we can actually effectively learn how to manage and treat our kids. Right, and um, there's a, a viewer here who is uh, tweeting us, that is Sir Charlie, being Charlie, he's saying that the world cut strikes in schools as a result of um, limited parental face time with children, overcrowding in schools, cram school year, 
poor health and safety measures in schools, poor teacher-student ratio, and caring children will not resolve these challenges. And Canon, of course, this is pretty consistent with what you were saying, but how will parents, um, modern day parents, deal with that indifference of what sort of punishment to instigate against their children? Um, apparently these days you hear that um, mothers are more involved in disciplining their children more than the fathers. How do you deal with this indif indifference without affecting that relationship adversely? Yes, it's a, it's a big challenge because um, whereas in the 90s and the 60s and 70s, there will be one parent who is working and the mother will be at home. So the first time with you and your mother was much, much higher. Um, in the 90s, we started seeing more women taking up jobs and perhaps even being far away from the family. And uh, even those that remained, uh, we, have, we have seen the, the first time with fathers, especially, has been quite low. Mm -hmm. And knowing also that uh, this country has about almost 40% uh, of uh, families headed by, by ladies, by single mothers. So we have a challenge in terms of the environment upon which we are parenting and nurturing our children. Um, what we are doing as a church is to try and reach out to parents, try and reach out to mothers so that they actually have enough time. Even though they are looking for daily bread, they need to have time and they know that they have a responsibility to bring up their children, to bring up their children in the way they should go. Mm -hmm. Even now that we have banned caning, we still hear about cases of parents who have caned their children or punished their children until they have injured them or, or actually killed them. The same thing even with, uh, with schools. Some schools still do it, although under the table. So we, we feel that this is the right time to have this conversation. And perhaps uh, what the Ministry of Education is doing is perhaps what they need to do is to do a, a study. Mm -hmm. What was the impact of caning in the 70s and 60s and 70s, and how the 90s and 200 um, have, have shown us up to the current time. So that then by the time that we come up with a policy on caning in school, we have a place. Uh, we have um, a proper data that can guide us. But going as to us to us as the faiths, uh, I think we do have a very heavy responsibility in helping parents be able to discharge that responsibility to their children in terms of shaping them, in terms of their thoughts, their religious beliefs, their culture, and especially how to respect our authority and other people. Mm -hmm. The other thing that we are discussing with the ministry is about chaplains. There's no reason why the army has chaplains, the police has chaplains, and our secondary schools don't have chaplains. You imagine a school with 1,500 children, and that school does not has, of course, the, the, the teachers that do career guidance and counseling, but you need somebody who will guide the lives of these young people and mold them. And that is why we have seen, um, uh, when, when you want discipline, because it's a closed community, it will be good to have a lot of psychosocial support. Mm -hmm. And we are advising the Ministry of Education to consider having a cadre of staff with proper terms and conditions of service so that the chaplains then support the head teachers and the school system so that they guide the lives of, of, of the people. Mm -hmm. The schools that have chaplains and have career guidance systems that are strong, we see them excelling in exams. We see the children who come out of those schools being better. Because let us not, um, let us not um, forget that the schools that we have in the country, we still are not ready to be like the US and the UK where most of the schools are day, are day, they are they are, they are day scholars. Right, day schools. We we still have the, the the boarding schools where most of these challenges are being witnessed. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, all right. Of course, it's a go, uh, continuing conversation about how to rescue the situation, and of course, it's important to understand that uh, those in school. Uh, the future of this country, of course, they're transitioning to their adulthood, and like he said, that um, the children are a reflection of the adults in that society. So we take a short break here. When we come back, we'll be talking about um, the lessons from the Mwingi tragedy, and thereafter we'll branch out to talk about the state of politics in the country and the events that are unfolding uh, this week and in, into the future after the break.